World Sports Britain. Coming up, the Energizer Bunnies. We're hunting rabbits from an electric car. First, I'm here in Malta to find out if Bill Oddie is right and the hunters here are a bunch of cowboys. Only kidding. It's the start of the spring hunting season here. Turtle doves and quail. And the Maltese have just won a major vote to allow them to carry on shooting. Did you go on the countryside marches in the UK? Have you protested in favour of hunting in the USA or Australia? Were you in Dusseldorf the other day, showing the local government your support for hunting? Well, none of us have had it as bad as Malta. The Swedes, they've got the moose. Yorkshire, they've got the grouse. <laughs> We've got the turtle love and quail. The spotlight and pressure on these hunters is unprecedented. The Antis have been fielding their big guns, celebrities getting valuable airtime to bring about a ban on bird shooting. They did well and forced a referendum held last weekend. And after teetering over the precipice, the hunters fought off the bad press. So here I am in Malta to find out whether this Mediterranean island's hunters are the cowboys the comedian Bill Oddie says they are. First, have a guess how many birds they can shoot during the spring season. We can catch each four, the maximum. The hunting season is open for 20 days, half days, till 2 p.m. Uh, on Sunday and on Saturday till noon. And even there is some areas in Malta till 10. Just in case you missed that, it's four birds per season, which lasts 20 half days. I don't think Andy Crow will be visiting Malta anytime soon. And then there's the paperwork. Before you go hunting, you have to write down the, day, the date, the place you are going hunting, and the, um, the number of the species that you, you're going to hunt. In this case, it's turtle, duff and quay, so one and two. And then after you, uh, you catch a uh, turtle duff, you have to write down here uh, the number. So that's a bit of the backstory. No mass slaughter, as described this week, and if you shoot a legal quarry, it means big fines, prison, and loss of licence. On that note, let's go hunting on the first day of the spring hunting season. Traditionally, they shoot doves and quail from what look like grouse butts, and then eat them. We just sit here, we put them the gun there, and we wait for uh, maybe a dove. In the early morning sun, we spot not doves nor quail, but lesser spotted protesters. Very common round here. Numbers are here, look, running with their cameras. Oh, what are they, are they aunties? Yeah, here is all, all private land, eh? they, they could... This is trespass and the protesters seem to know it. Their first reaction is to retreat. When they see that we mean business, they come over to talk. It's all of it is private land, but I've got no problem with that. Okay, thanks. Just as long as you identify yourself with the people okay. when you're... Did you see there's a stone curlew? Yeah, just yeah, 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 I saw that, yes. We were watching we saw one the, dove. Lesser, the lesser kestrels. Like yeah, lesser here. kestrels, and I saw... And I, I came over... So they are bird watchers. Of course they are. Just Rupert is a Brit who has been on the island for three years, part of it working for BirdLife International, which has led the campaign against hunters private land, it's uh, all okay. it belongs this, to us. I thought this okay. was like a footpath down to no, the, no, the lines. Do you think they were really bird watchers? Uh, I don't know really, I could never tell. Um, but I don't like confrontation, I mean I like we're here doing something legal, whatever is legal I am protected to do, so and I've got no problem them enjoying themselves watching birds that are protected. He said he saw Stone Kerlu. Uh, landing somewhere and they wanted to take a couple of shots. I've got no problem with that at all. Uh, but they have to have the decency at least to ask and uh, identify themselves so that at least we know where they are and what they're doing. So what is all the fuss about? It's about these. Just like salmon anglers taking advantage of the fish going to spawn and not unlike British woodcock shooters or American duck hunters enjoying the sporting bonanza of bird migrations, the best time to shoot the quail and turtle doves that fly from Africa to Europe and back again is when they're on the move, heading to Europe to breed. Once the Antis reckoned they could win this spring hunting referendum, they really turned the spotlight on Malta. They started telling lies. They started confrontation that led to violence. They did find out some bad practice, and you could argue that has been a good thing. If people were shooting birds illegally here now, 
they probably aren't going to anymore. But it has been a long and harrowing campaign and the Antis clearly had it in mind that if they captured Malta, the rest of Europe could fall in behind. Lucas has hunted all over the world. He understands and respects other hunting cultures and doesn't understand why his is being scrutinised and confronted by sobbing TV personalities. I encountered Chris Beckham with his camera person. He said we shoot millions of, of birds every year and crying on, on video just... I mean, for money, everyone does, does, does the same, I mean, for sure he was paid to do his job, I mean, so... And now there's a court ruling as well against Chris Beckham, so... You, you managed to get a court ruling? Yep. For sure he won't be here when, when the ruling would be, would be heard. He'll be, he'll be back in the UK trying to... So, no, but I mean, we had, we had Bill Oddie also, Brian May, the Antis have trouble telling the difference between a turtle dove and a collared dove, as this picture from the League Against Cruel Sports boss Joe Duckworth's Twitter page shows. Joe's been on the bandwagon, sorry, Island 2. He is releasing a common collared dove, not a turtle dove. We don't shoot turtle doves in the UK, but if you want to provide useful turtle dove conservation and maybe a welcome boost in numbers for Malta's hunters, shoot a collared dove today. It will free up turtle dove nesting sites. For people like Lucas, losing hunting would have been devastating. It was a do or die situation for us. I had a lot of sleepless nights, let's say. So yeah. <laughs> Thursday I ended up I ended up in hospital because I had my my um, my blood pressure just <laughs> so one could imagine. It's, it's quite important for us. I mean, you're a hunter yourself, so <laughs> you could understand. <laughs> Bird shooting is not the only kind of shooting on the island. If you're coming on holiday, give a couple of weeks' notice to get the necessary permits and you can come to the Maktab shooting range, one of several on Malta. And tell me, what, what, have, you, what have you got here by way of uh, targets? What are, you, what are you shooting here? What are you shooting? Um, the first one we have the, the pointer to a lot, which means the revolver, piston, um, uh, rifle calibers, um, like the pointer to a lot. And then um, we have the clay pigeon, which means the uh, DTL and the double trap. Down there, there's the uh, archery range, and the other side, there's the, the the paintball. There. Shooting is big on the island. On nearby Gozo, you can shoot full bore rifles. On Malta, the residents are restricted to rimfire calibers. With Libya now under attack from Islamic State and just 200 miles away, home defence is an issue here. Back at the hunt and the long wait for a bird to come past continues. So what is the future? Godfrey is clear. Respect the law and respect the will of the masses. I believe that uh, the people that put the trust and the vote in me, I've got to respect that and I've got to work hard there uh, to show them that the, their vote was uh, worth it. People like Bill Oddy and Chris Packham have cleared out the FKNK's fund. If you are feeling generous, go to their website, iva.org.mt, and donate. This fight ain't over yet. If you are the kind of person who likes banning other people from doing things, one benefit of democracy is that you get to ask the same question over and over again until you get the answer you want. Now from a sun-drenched hillside somewhere in the southern Mediterranean to blowy old Britain and the windbag that is Field Sports Channel News. This is Field Sports Channel News. We start with a warning because there's some gruesome images coming up. A hunter in New Zealand mistaken by his mates for a deer is lucky to be alive after being shot by a 270. 21-year-old Max Versturen was wearing a headlamp when retrieving his own deer at around 9.30pm when a friend mistook the lamp for a deer's eye. Doctors who showed Versturen photos of the wound encouraged him to buy a lottery ticket before his luck runs out. Australians have won a victory over gun control nuts. Last year, the Greens launched an ambush on gun owners disguised as a Senate inquiry to investigate how to crack down on gun violence. Gun owners have fought back and have achieved a more reasonable report. The inquiry board even issued an apology for one of the misleading statements it made 
claiming that most guns used in crimes were stolen from licensed gun owners. Thanks to our Australian correspondent Mike for sending us this story. Are you in or around Essex on the 18th of April and fancy a bit of shooting? Independent Shooting Supplies in Mount Nessing is holding an open day with Caesar Garini and Fab Arm shotguns. Go to bit.ly forward slash Essex shoot. All but two of the Republican presidential hopefuls made speeches at the American NRA convention in Nashville, Tennessee last weekend. They had one topic on their mind, Hillary Clinton. Senator Ted Cruz of Texas called her a gun grabber and former Florida Governor Jeb Bush called the Second Amendment the original Homeland Security Act as he pitched his record on guns. As NRA Executive Vice President Wayne LaPierre said, Hillary Clinton hasn't met a gun control bill she couldn't support. Britain's Labour Party plans a special tax on gun owners. In Labour's Crime and Justice Manifesto, Shadow Home Secretary Yvette Cooper says that a Labour government will end the police subsidy of gun licences. And finally, an office worker alone on a Saturday afternoon was surprised when a deer smashed through her window. She thought it may have been caused by a baseball until she saw the deer going down the hallway. You are now to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Now let's see what you lot have been up to. It is Hello Charlie. Charlie, this is Bill in Arizona, shooting our annual hunting rifle shoot with my 416 Rigby. Hi, right. Charlie, it's Alan, out in Northumberland. Let's see if we can get ourselves a robot this morning. It's a nice early start. Hello Charlie. Just popped out for 10 minutes this evening and look what popped up. That's it. Please send me your Hello Charlies via Facebook, YouTube, Dropbox or email charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Now Mike Powell has more top tips for a fuller foxing experience. He is out foxing. I, I do know people who are far more rather go and shoot a target and get a good group at 300 yards than they would necessarily go and shoot a fox at 200. It's almost a different pastime. Mark Ripley loads and shoots brilliantly at very long ranges, way out of my capabilities. Um, and I'm sure that he just does it like shelling peas. I haven't reached that stage. I think one of the problems I have if it is a problem, I mean, it's, it's a huge privilege to be sent stuff to test and try. But in truth, you don't want a lot of rifles. You don't want a lot of different types of ammunition. You want to find a rifle that suits you, the ammunition that suits the rifle, get used to it and use it. I, I think it would be fair to say that the, the most consistent rifle I ever used in my life was my first BSA Cadet 177 Springer that I had God knows how many years ago now, 70 years ago. And I put thousands and thousands of pellets through that and I could hit things thrown up in the air with it, which I could never do with rifles now. I think sometimes we're, today we're spoilt for choice. I enjoy, I do enjoy, I do enjoy reloading. Um, and it, it is exciting to be able to use your own ammunition and shoot something stone dead. Um, yes, and I will probably get better. Like my school report said, could do better. Next up, Dom Holton finds a new super stealthy way to creep up on rabbits. It is going to be one of those evenings. He even had a... Uh, oh my God. He swallowed the whole torch. He had a spray tan, especially so they don't show up in the moonlight. Do you have them whitened when you were in Mexico? King. No, I didn't. <laughs> Was it, were you a uh, 
one of those like cosmetic surgery tourists. No, I wasn't. I had a cosmetic surgery. No, no you just had your teeth white. No, I just had my teeth white. Yeah. You need liposuction. <laughs> yeah. We've already suggested that the Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV could appeal to the shooting market because of its 4x4 stealth, but tonight we're going to try and see if we can win over the likes of Crow, because he might harbour the odd doubt. What do you reckon the vehicle? Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah, it's, it's good. I haven't been in it yet. No, I'm just saying, well, like, visually, what do you think of it? Yeah, it looks nice. Yeah? Yeah, I wish I put one for the missus. Mm. Yeah, I wouldn't have got an electric one, would I? Why? Bloody battery goes flat after 30 miles. You have to walk home. Cut. Do you reckon we'll convert you then to electric power tonight? I was impressed the way you jutted off out the. Jutted? <laughs> jutted off out the. <laughs> you, like, you like the fact that I was nearly able to run over Baby Crow because he couldn't hear it coming. Yeah. He, had, he had his earphones on, didn't he? He did, yeah. Yeah, he's quiet. No, he's quite impressive. So you're going to shoot some bodies, isn't it? Yeah, just loss them in the back. So we've got leather suits. Please. Oh, well, I'll check with Davey. He says it's not my car, do we want? Is that what he said? Yeah. So, making sure Baby Crow is nowhere around, we head off, hoping to catch the bunnies unaware. Crow is using his faithful Anschutz 17HMR this evening, and very soon the red beam of lamp finds the bunnies. It's tough to gauge whether the rabbits are being caught napping, but Andy's put thousands of them in the back of his buggy over the years. He should be able to give us an educated guess. What we find with the rabbits after a while, I get to... I hear the buggy coming, I hear the um, quad bites coming, and... Uh, they're on their toes and away. But with this, we found off oh, why. Notice that the rabbits tend to sit better. I'd have to take the windscreen out and um, <laughs> I need to put something, I need something for my arm to rest. More rabbits fall, and with the battery spent and the petrol engine breaking the near silence, we head home for a debrief. Right, first question, Andy. Yes. You were a bit skeptical when we set out. Yeah, I was. About the electric vehicle. Yeah, I was. What do you reckon of it? Um, honestly? Honestly. I thought it was brilliant. Uh, the only letdown was when the battery went flat, was when the engine started up, it sounded a bit noisy. Because <laughs> it had been quiet for so long, but no, it was, I was impressed with it. I mean, we, we only had a, a short charge on that. We only yeah, had a few miles because we've been cocking about taking yeah. pictures of it earlier. But yeah. if you have a, a fully charged battery, yeah. I think you'd get round a, a decent night's rabbit, wouldn't you? Yeah, definitely. So uh, that was a good bit of fun out with uh, with Crowland tonight. I was really excited to try this bit of kit. It's the first, I say, the first uh, hybrid that's that's really appealed to me uh, as a shooter as well as a, a motoring enthusiast. We tried to get stuck a few times, but you did, yeah. But it did okay, didn't it? Yeah, it did. So yeah. yeah, if this is the future, it's not all bad. Not bad for us, but possibly a pain in the tailpipe for the rabbits. From rabbiting in the southeast of England to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube, it is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. This is a lovely channel from Switzerland. Mario Teus speaks Romance, a little known language from the southeast of the country, so he also provides English subtitles. Perfect for your inner Heidi, this film is about a deer that has been visiting his mountain home. Back to the UK, and 260 Rips is out after long distance foxes again. Getting better and better, this film is called Foxing and Varminting. Manny CA from Southern California sends in his ground squirrel hunting compilation. Lots of vanishing rodents. He is using a 2 Hornet to shoot them out to 200 yards. Incredible mobile phone footage of three wild boar shot in nine seconds. Fleming Peshart is on a driven day in Poland. Give that man a better camera and see what he can do. Here's what you can do with a GoPro with a bit of imagination. Hunting game working dogs is hunting huge wild boar with dogs. Warning, very graphic. I love the all-American Kendall Jones and she has brought out the fourth episode of her Game On series. Kendall and Taylor head down to South Texas to hunt some whitetail on the Covenant Ranch. Here's a reason not to go for a walk in the woods in Russia. The Evenki are a nomadic tribe of subsistent hunters from Siberia. One of their techniques is fashioning crossbows that work on tripwires on trails. It's a long film and there is lots of Russian, but here is how to make one. And finally, how do you catch a snapping turtle? Ask Australian Andrew Uckles, who is with Laura Zera. They are in South America to grab the world's largest freshwater turtle using a stick and nerves of ice. That's it for this week. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, send it in via YouTube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv
Well, we are back next week. Please subscribe. Please go to our webpage, fieldsportschannel.tv, where you can click to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter or pop your email address into our constant contact box and we'll constantly contact you about our show. It's at 7 p.m. UK time every Wednesday. This has been Field Sports Britain from Malta. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, and goodbye.